Uh, greeting everyone, this is Alfadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this fascinating series. Today we are going to take a closer look now at the sources of Islam versus the sources of Christianity, which is something that normally is brought up. Uh, Muslims in general, but even skeptics sometimes will point the finger at the Bible and question its history, question its eyewitness accounts, and so on and so forth. But here we are going to make this comparative analysis between the available sources of early Islam versus the available sources of early Christianity. With me here to do that is our dear brother, Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, and, and, and listen, this is again, you had said in earlier episodes that I love to look at the comments. I do, I like to go, I don't, I'm not, I don't look at every comment, uh, but I kind of do a triage. And as I'm going through, I pick up ones that are substantial, the ones that are substantive, the ones that are actually making us point and aren't just sitting there and doing vitriol or doing ad hominem. I really do care about people that are serious about what we are introducing and interjecting. And so when I pick up comments that are uh, that are substantive, and one of the, some of the comments that are coming up over and over again is, Jay, this is okay, I, we understand why you're confronting Islam, but you need to ask, also ask the same question of Christianity, because you have just as bad a problem with Christianity as you do with Islam. And I want to prove that we do not have that problem. In fact, when you do a comparative between what we have versus what Islam have, there's just no comparison. So let's go back to that slide again, uh, where we ended off the last episode. Let's put up that slide, and here you can see, uh, just go ahead and, and comment what you see here and unpack what we've looked at so that the people know where we're going. Well, basically what we've shown is that the standard Islamic dates, for instance, when did Muhammad die? Uh, we showed the standard Islamic date when Ibn Isham, for instance, uh, you know, lived, died, and he's the one who wrote the Sirah, technically speaking. That's the color green. We looked at... And so that's 200 years. That's right. You know, 200 so years, of, and then we talked about these are 200 years of oral tradition. That's right. These are people, so therefore Ibn Hisham did not live at the same time that Muhammad lived, nor did he live in the same place that Muhammad lived. That That's hugely significant. Right, and also we looked at the color blue representing the six major sources of hadith under the Sunni tradition, but at least the top two, Bukhari and Muslim. Every Muslim knows about this, especially Bukhari. They consider it to be the authentic, uh, basically, source, uh, meaning that whatever Bukhari reported to us, technically uh, speaking, Muhammad did say, and we learn from there uh, how to live as a Muslim, technically speaking, how to behave as a Muslim, how to pray as a Muslim, how to perform pilgrimage as a Muslim, and the list can go on and on and on. But yet, we see that the span between Bukhari and Muhammad is 240 years. 240 years. That. Yet again, we have an oral tradition, Isnad versus eyewitness uh, tradition. And then we started to look at major, basically, caliphate uh, that emerged after the so-called the Rashidun or the right, uh, rightly guided ones, which is concluded at the end of the life of Ali. And now we start with the Umayyads and then later the Abbasids. And I think we zoomed in onto why the Abbasids are extremely important when it comes to having all these sources. Because everything that that is Islam gives us comes from the Abbasids. Right. You say uh, uh, besides, I say Abbas. It's either way or correct to say it. Yeah. But this is a legitimate question. We are poking holes on the standard Islamic narrative. Let's go to the standard Christian narrative and let's ask the same question. So let's look at this graph here. And it's moved to here. And here is the what we will call the emergence of Christianity according to our traditions. Now, as I said in a previous episode, who, what are our, our traditions? Well, they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, would be the Siddha and also uh, the Hadith. That would be the life of Jesus and also the sayings of Jesus. Black letter for the life, red letter uh, part for the sayings of Jesus. So we're going to ask the question of both the Siddha and the Hadith of Jesus. We're going to also go to the Tafsir, uh, which would be the letters of Paul, and as you say, Peter and others as well, but mainly Paul is the one where much of the tafsir, and what Paul did is he just took what Jesus said and did and applied it to Ephesus, to Philippi, to Corinth, to Rome, and to the other places. And then we're going to look at the tahrih, which would be, which the tarikh, which would be the history of the early church acts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on a timeline. Now, I'm going to have to, certain Christians, I know there are some heresy hunters always out there, and they're going to jump on us because of the dates I'm going to give. I'm going to say from the get-go, I'm going to step on some toes with the dates I'm going to put up here. Not all of you Christians are going to agree with these dates. I don't even agree with these dates. I'm taking the most liberal dates possible to make a point. 
Okay, so don't jump all over me. Don't call me a heretic. Don't write letters to Al Fadi to have me thrown off, thrown off his show because of what I'm saying. Because they might I know, throw me out of my show. Also, uh, I know people have been writing you having just said, <laughs> "Do not have Jay Smith on anymore because he's a heretic." Because he said A, B, or C. I assume that you know now. These are the most liberal dates. Okay, bear with me. Let's just go back to and, to, and here's why, Jay. What you're saying is, if we take the extreme of the most extreme dates, Islam still have a it problem. Proves my point even better. Yes. All right, let's go back to the slide and let's look at this timeline. So what do we know? Most scholars would put the dates for the books of the New Testament in this timeline much, much earlier. We are using the latest possible dates to make our point even clearer. That's what I'm saying, okay? Mm -hmm. So Jesus dies in 33 AD. How do we know he dies in 33 AD? Because of Tacitus. Tacitus, the Roman historian, refers to the death of Jesus Christ during the time of Pontius Pilate under the authority of Tiberius. So that's why we know. So no one disputes that. At least historians don't dispute that. Muslims may want to dispute that. We don't dispute it. You don't dispute it, do you? No, not at all. Let's go with that then. Jesus died in 33 AD. All right? So What's the first reference? Well, let's look at the book of Acts. And I would suggest that this is the first genre. We know that Paul's letters were much earlier than this, but let's go with the Tariq. The Tariq of Jesus would be the book of Acts. Why the book of Acts? Well, because it's a historical book, technically speaking. Just like we have in Old Testament 12 books, we call them the historical genre. The book of Acts in the New Testament represents that too. Okay, so it is... The history of the church. It's the history of, of the early church, and that's why we... It's in, it's or part. the start of the church, put it this way. And that would have been written between 52 and 62 AD. So roughly within 20 to 30 years of Christ's death, you get the tarikh written down mm -hmm. of Jesus. Following that, uh, we get the tafsir. Paul was uh, uh, killed in Rome in 65 AD. So between 48 and 65, I'm giving the most liberal dates. I know it's much earlier, but let's just go with those dates. Between 48 and 65 AD, he writes down his uh, letter to Ephesus and to Philippi and to Corinth. He writes the, the, the amazing theological treatise uh, to, to Rome uh, uh, to, uh, called Romans that we have today. This would have been written within 15 to 34 years of Christ's death. Liberal dates, I know, but nonetheless, see my point, see my point. So the tafsir there, that would be equivalent to the tafsir of Al-Tabri. Remember, we have, Tabri is the earliest to write the tafsir. We have Zamakshari, Suyuti, Ibn Daud, many who come after Al-Tabri, but he died in 923. Here yeah. you have and also, I want to emphasize uh, those of you who might come back, and, and, and uh, Jay is absolutely correct. There are people that I know that are heresy hunters. All they do is just to take things like this, put them in their channel, and act like as if they are protecting the faith somehow that we are blaspheming here. But anyway, uh, he's using Islamic terms right now to correlate and compare to the Islamic terminology. That's all. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So, thanks for putting that caveat because I'm yeah. tired of all these me heresy too. hunters attacking me, attacking me. Too. me attacking I am me. too. Yeah. So let's go on. Yeah. So then you have the Siddha and Hadith of Mark, uh, died in 70 AD by the most liberal dates. Uh, and so you have within 37 years, you have the Gospel of Mark written there, followed by the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. You can see here the Siddha and the Hadith of Matthew and Luke. 80 AD is the date. I'm going to put the most liberal date I can find. That's 47 years. And then the final one would be the Gospel of John. So there you have the Gospel of John uh, within, uh, well, 90 AD. Uh, that's within 57 years. Okay, why is that important? What's going on here? What have I just shown? These dates? Yeah. You're showing the span between at least the life of Jesus and when these accounts would have been uh, written. And it shows that the existence of eyewitness accounts is extremely important here. Look and see. Yeah, you can say that... Everything we're talking about, the tafsir, the tahri, the sirah, and the hadith, all of them were written within 29 to 57 years of Christ's death. Can you see that here? Everything yeah. is written within 27 to 57 years of Christ's death. Mm -hmm. What's even more important is that, that every one of these writers, all of the New Testament writers, 
lived in the same place Jesus lived. We're going to see that next in the next episode, why that's important. And they either knew him personally, like John knew him. Listen, he was his favorite disciple. He was there at the foot of the cross. He was there with Jesus while he was dying. Matthew was at a distance looking at it. The other disciples, we assume, were watching it from a distance. So they would have been eyewitnesses. But Luke uh, gets his material from Peter, uh, Marcus is also, and so they are the ones that got it from the eyewitnesses. They were not there to see it themselves, but they got it from the eyewitnesses. But at least they were living at the same time when this event took place and in the same area. That's hugely significant. Why is that important to you? Well, I mean, for me now, as a follower of Jesus, of course, is extremely important because these are the things that open my eyes, by the way, uh, to the fact that I have things I can stand on versus Islam does not have a foundation that you can stand on, meaning the claims about the dates, the claims about the existence of certain events, the claims about the collection of certain sayings like the Hadith and so on and so forth. I am teaching a course right now, by the way, comparing just the Bible to the Quran and using this kind of material, and the students are blown away by the solid foundation we have when it comes to the Bible versus the loose foundation. I want to just end with one slide real quickly. Yeah. We need to get this in. Let's take a look at the slide. Comparing Christianity to Islam. When we were the earliest biography saying for both faiths, well, take a look. Christianity were written within 15 to 60 years later, written by those from the same area, whereas Islam was written two to 300 years later, hundreds of miles too far north. Which would you guess is more authoritative? As a comparison, if we as Christians had to depend on the sources for Jesus that Islam is need, needs for Muhammad. We will be attacked. We would not know anything about Jesus until the third century. That's right. How could we defend him? How could we get out in public and say, this man actually lived in this place and did these things and said these things at that time? How could we do that? Absolutely. And I would say Muslims and others will have every right to attack us if that's the time span we're relying on. No one that when growing up, when I was growing up, no one ever said this about Islam to me. No one ever showed me these kind of dates. Everything we know about Muhammad, everything we know about the origins of Islam, everything we know about Islam itself or the Muslims or the Quran or even the city of Mecca come from two to three hundred years later. Why was I not told that? Why were you not told that when you were growing up? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I think everyone sees now the devastating problem when it comes to Islamic sources, dating, as opposed to what we just demonstrated to you in a simple fashion, using the most extreme of dates, by the way, for the biblical, uh, uh, basically, uh, or the Bible, I should say, and the biblical narrative, the New Testament in particular. And you can see now that Islam has a problem that even Houston cannot resolve. Until next time, have a blessed day. <music>